film festivals are very different you know and they are very competitive so every festival is actually trying to be different from another festival now it is uh, the responsibility for festival programmer to understand the vision of the festival which is usually set by the uh, artistic director or festival director of the festival and then to be able to choose films that fit into uh, you know mm. vision of the festival now as a programmer i have a niche which is that i work only as a programmer for india and south asia it's a decision that i have taken so my role as a programmer might be very different from programmers who program for international sections of the festival where they are looking at films from all over the world but for me uh, i decided that i wanted to dedicate my career to actually recognizing indian talent and uh, south asian talent so the idea hmm. is that uh, to make a film a good film now how do you make a good film is another whole course of i don't know how many years but hmm. uh, basically it's a film of high quality you know you have to make a film that can be comparable with the films made all around the world you have to understand that film festivals are basically competitive in nature when you submit you are competing with talent from all around the world so the standard of it has to be really high certain things are looked into for example if you are a debut filmmaker you know you i should try to limit the length of your film to 90 minutes you know or uh, if you want it to be successfully placed in a festival because a 2 hour film uh, is seen as an indulgent film or an indulgent length for a debut filmmaker there are so many different types of festivals those cater to specific kinds of uh, you know films and uh, whereas you have film festivals that take F and they want to be as eclectic as possible you know so uh, i would i wouldn't say that this is the kind of film that will go to a festival but uh, what what festivals are interested in is what filmmakers are trying to say through cinema and how well are they being, how well uh, are they able to put it across and if by doing it are they taking the cinematic medium a little forward or no it's more than what the film is trying to say it's how is it trying to say what it's trying to say the market is a place where uh, which is open only to film professionals ideally and it is exactly what it, the name is that uh, it is a market you know so the place where the biggest activity is buying and selling of films you know for the guys who are buying films and selling films the filmmakers are selling the film rights and uh, people who are buying it could be uh, distributors or theater owners VOD platforms, or it could also be sales agents who take your film on board to sell it to places that they know. And uh, it, but the heart of many market is something called a co-production market. Now that is a very complex uh, thing to e- explain on you know uh, in a short uh, period of time. But it's basically to say that you know film producing is very different across the world versus Europe. Now, Europe might be the on, one of the only places in the world where producing of films happen through public funds. You know, it is actually public money. And what co-production markets do is that um, it b- brings in European uh, producers who have access to these funds, and uh, the producers are looking out for talent and scripts from, say, at the film bazaar. It's it's special you know, India. south asia uh, market so uh, film bazaar will curate around uh, 20 25 scripts every year by indian and south asian talent and then they invite european co-producers to come on board and then you have like these dating sessions right you have these hmm. uh, meetings which happen every you know where every film is 15 minutes pitch the writer or producer and if the producer is convinced that this idea really will work then he comes on board the co-producer of the film and then as a team they try to apply to various different funds the indian producer is trying to get money from india you know that is usually equity money to but be maybe only 30% of the film budget and then 70% the european producers who come on board will go and try to get it from your so 
they actually are coming together to get a film made and of course we have a great example in lunchbox which was um, you know the result of the film bazaar co production market and a huge success because of how it was produced apart from how it was uh, you know directed i truly believe that filmmakers should focus on making films and make full use of the infrastructure that's available for the distribution or or for film festival right so try to go to market and you should try to get a sales agent who actually understands festival strategy now a sales agent is someone who has traveled all over the world traveled to many festivals has on ground experience of what that festival does and hence know whether your film will work in that region will not work in that region but the festival that you know might take your film might not they understand some piece of certain festivals or certain programmers and they are able to and they have a list of i don't know how many how to do this right so while you decide that i'm going to sit and apply to a festival you will be applying to one festival a week but the sales agent would be able to apply to uh, almost like 10 festivals within that same week what you're saying technical finesse for me basically mm. is craft mm. you know i'm or i but i think it gets confused for production value mm. they're two very different things you know mm. you can make a film on an iphone or with a handy cam or you can make you know a very small film and it mm. can be a very interesting experience and an, an amazing film you know can mm. examples of you know things that are literally of very low budget the reason they are great films is because the filmmaker knows his or her craft really well they know mm. they have already thought of the kind of shot they want to take they are they have great edit you know they are editing the film very well it just seems right when you are you know watching it they are not in for the shusha of production design so one of the things is that it's very important when you uh, apply to a festival that you research the festival right you are you just don't apply to anything that comes to you make a little effort of going on the website researching the festival and very important is before you start filling the form please please read the entire rules and regulations clearly film festival form is a very long form if you think you're going to finish on monday most probably you will not so start the process by keeping a, a list of questions you want to ask and then see if you can answer them yourself if you are asking a question then please give the festival at least 3 days to reply don't be anxious for a reply don't keep pestering don't keep saying that you know don't panic i would say as a filmmaker your approach should be just ask ask without an ego you know because you don't know whether the festival will give you the free waiver or not and if you're not going to get the free waiver don't be offended that you didn't get it you know so ask without an expectation of a yes but with hope you know and so i think there's nothing wrong in asking but if you don't get it don't let it upset you or don't think that that in any way has a bearing on your chances of the film being selected or not uh, being selected if you are making a film for festival please put it in your budget that certain amount of money like please allocate money for fees festivals <laughs> now if you want to gain from a festival you need to invest at least that minimal amount and just think about it it's it's a great lottery you get into a good festival just because you paid the fees and what you can reap out of it you know so mm. do budget it hey guys thanks for watching this video and if you like what we do follow us on our socials and check out our other uploads